Even in these times of billion dollar budgets and trillion dollar deficits, a million is still a lot of money. So much that you would think a casino would notice it was missing, but no one did. Here's News 13 investigative reporter Larry Barker with New Mexico's great casino heist. Where $1.2 million went, we have no idea. This particular case really shocked me for the amount of money and for how long it went on. How could these two individuals get away with so much over so long without being detected? Nobody's looking. It was a high-stakes game of fraud and forgery. A casino heist, the likes of which has never been seen before in New Mexico. The victim, Sandia Casino. The take, $1.2 million. It was an inside job cooked up by two employees, slot machine attendant Lynn Gallo and slot supervisor Steve Royball. Despite security guards and surveillance cameras, nobody at Sandia noticed Gallo and Royball secretly looting the casino of thousands of dollars practically every day for more than a year. So what went wrong at Sandia? Well, you won't find the answer in New Mexico. You'll find it here in Glitter Gulch, Las Vegas. In Sin City, you can take a chance on Lady Luck or learn how to run a gambling hall. Anthony Lucas is a casino security expert. He teaches gaming at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. These two people were just banking on the fact that nobody's looking and, and that there aren't any internal controls in place. And if so, they're not being you know, adhered to. And, and this thing doesn't work any other way. Dave Schwartz is director of UNLV's Center for Gaming Management. Obviously, they found a vulnerability in their procedures and they were able to exploit it pretty effectively you know to the tune of 1.2 million dollars don't see money why do this why not do it now it doesn't take the likes of brad pitt and george clooney to mastermind a big time casino heist you see this is hollywood gallo and roy ball were the real deal so how did they pull it off slot machines win a couple thousand dollars on the slots and a casino employee will hand you your winnings in cash on the spot. Gallo and Royball scam Sandia by creating these phony jackpot payout slips and then pocketing the cash. Here's how it worked. Gallo would hand the casino's cashier this document indicating a customer had won a big slot machine jackpot. The cashier would then give Gallo the winning cash to take to the customer. The transaction was approved by supervisor Steve Royball. Instead of giving the money to a customer, Gallo simply put it in her pocket. You see, the whole thing was a con game. There was no jackpot and no customer. And because Sandia's management was not watching, Gallo and Royball were able to steal as much as $20,000 in a single day. Over the course of 15 months, the pair of thieves repeated the con more than 550 times, embezzling $1.2 million. Doesn't matter if it's uh, the MGM Grand in Las Vegas or Sandia, any internal theft or false jackpots of any magnitude is always a big deal. Jeff Voiles is a casino management expert and a gaming professor at UNLV. He says Sandia's internal controls should have detected the scheme well before Gallo and Royball cashed in on their illegal game. Where they did go wrong, is that I believe their auditing was not up to par. Um, that auditing created a huge gap, and that gap created a crime. So what they did was they gave an opportunity for two low-level employees uh, to take advantage of that. Every one of those bogus payouts would have been a red flag for the casino if somebody was watching? Yes. So either the compliance and or accounting department should have caught this. Now, every slot machine in Sandia is electronically monitored. If there's a jackpot, the casino would know it. However, no one bothered to verify the phony jackpots. At a minimum, accounting should have been suspicious of so many 
There's such a great number of manual jackpot slips by the same two people. So this is a you know, major, just sort of intuitive red flag that, that would pop up, you know, from, from an accounting perspective. Eventually, greed figured in the game. On October 5th, 2006, the pair pocketed eight bogus jackpots, totaling more than $20,000. It was one too many. A co-worker reported the suspicious transactions to security. Sandia launched an investigation. Gallo and Royball were fired. When they get complacent and greedy, that's when we catch them. Shortly before a grand jury convened, Lynn Gallo died of natural causes. Steve Roybal alone was indicted on 699 counts of fraud, forgery, and embezzlement. He later pled guilty. At sentencing, the judge hit him hard. 50 years in the state pen. Never have I seen it before. It's an extremely unusual sentence. This is an individual that, as far as I know, didn't have a criminal record. Steve Royball serves his time at the Lee County Prison in Hobbs, where once he was a casino supervisor, today he works in a prison supply room. In a jailhouse interview, Royball freely talked about the biggest casino heist in state history. Whose idea was it how to steal the money? Um, I would have to say it was probably both of ours because of the the flaws, I guess you could say, in the system. So was it easy to steal all that money? I guess you could say, yeah, to a point it was, yeah. I mean, it, they made it that easy because nobody checked, nobody looked back to see what was going on. Steve Royball is paying the price for his high-stakes crime spree. Is Steve Royball a master criminal? No, he's not. He's not. He's actually a good person, a real good person. People just need to see that. And where is all that missing cash? There's not hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash stuck in some buried coffee can someplace? Oh, no, no, there's not. No. Yeah, like I said, I would have given it right away the first day. You know, the, I would have given it right away. Sandia's insurance company did reimburse the casino $1 million under a dishonest employee policy. So what changes were made? What lessons were learned? We don't know. Tribal leaders did not return our repeated requests for comment. Steve Royball won't be eligible for parole until 2034. Even then, he won't be off the hook. The IRS wants 350,000. The state tax department wants 30 grand. Sandia Casino wants 180,000. And the insurance company, well, it wants its million dollars back. Does crime pay? Asked Steve Royball. It was a mistake that I regret every day. Every day. There's not a moment that goes by that I don't regret it. Larry Barker, KRQE News 13.